big second hour, which should, by the way, begin SmackDown. You know what time it is. Yeah, One yeah. o'clock Wednesday. You know what that means. The meat hooks start clapping. We are on the downslope to the weekend. Hey, that only took two days, man. How about that? Can we start doing this more often? Four-day work weeks? Four-day weeks? Yeah. Why not? Why not? If they make it the new normal, whatever that's going to be, four-day work weeks. Don't quit. Excited. <laughs> we kind of quit saying new normal. <laughs> yeah, right. I told us that's supposed to be off our lawn. We're not supposed to say that anymore. Right. Uh, ex- excited about this hour. A couple of guests joining us. Bill King in 30 minutes for college football talk. We wrap it up with Change My Mind. Uh, but right now we're going to the phones to uh, bring on former Razorback, uh, longtime St. Louis Cardinal, three-time Gold Glover, and National League All-Star Tom Pagnozzi on to halftime for the first time. Tom, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for coming on. How are you? No good, guys. Appreciate it. Doing doing well. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you know, uh, the, you know when, we, I, when we, you when you had your cut in, I heard Dick Vitale's voice and it brought back a, a good memory of him. Well, what's your memory of Dick Vitale? Go ahead. Well, he he got me in trouble. We're in Atlanta, and um, he's sitting in the front row, and I walked over to him and said, you know, hey, how you got my Razorbacks? And he said, number one, they're going to win the national championship. I got them ahead of Vegas. Lost, you know, you UNLV. He goes, should you be worried about hitting? I said, I'm going to go deep anyways. And at that time, I had never hit a home run on the road. Every home run I hit, like my first 12 home runs were, were at Bush Stadium. And Avery's pitching, and I go yard. And I uh, went over and gave him a high five. So the next day, he's in the clubhouse. He's bringing me a bunch of stuff, the rock, some basketballs, some towels, some shirts. You know, he had that, that you know, give me the rock. And um, so Joe Torrey comes out and goes, looks, looks at me and points. He goes, get in here. And uh, I'm like, what? He goes, so you're sitting there talking to the fans and telling them what you're going to do? He never hit a home run on the road. And you tell him you're going to hit. A, tell him what you're going to do tonight. I said, Joe, I'm not that good, really. I'm not that good. But Dickie V was uh, he was a pleasure to be around, and and uh, you know, his energy was was incredible. Well, he he's a huge baseball fan. He's a season ticket holder at Tampa Bay Rays games. Did he come to a lot of spring training in St. Pete? Yes, he came to a lot of spring training. He was there every year. Every year, in fact, Whitey used to let him manage, and then Joe Torre let him manage a game. He gets a game where he manages. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Tory liked having people manage games instead of him sometimes. Didn't he used to have, if the Cardinals weren't in contention, the last game of the year would be managed by a player? I seem to remember yes. that. Yes. Yep. Uh, the, like the oldest player, or if you're retiring, um, you know, he'd let you manage. A lot of games in spring training, he, he let you. Uh, he would have, you know, when I was catching and, and, and you know, he had just taken over, I, he would have me sit next to him a couple times, and I want you to manage this game. You know, games that I wasn't playing, and he wants me to think the way he's thinking. You know, I got to tell him what I'm going to do, and he he would tell me why I wouldn't do it that way. Well, okay, you know, um, he was just a great teacher of the game. That's why uh, I think so many people love Joe Torrey. You know, when he was in St. Louis, we weren't very good because we didn't have the talent. You know, people thought he couldn't manage. Then he goes to the Yankees and wins what four or five World Championships. It, it helps when you have a bigger payroll and a lot better players. Tory fought that with the Mets, with the Braves, with the Cardinals. I got a friend that told that told me this like all of a sudden Joe Tory couldn't manage until he got to the Yankees. This makes no sense whatsoever. But hey, exactly. that's, that's that's what happens when you're uh, when you're running when you're running the show. Hey, I want I wanted to ask about about Lou Brock, uh, of course who um, who passed away this past uh, Sunday, uh, a native of Arkansas, one of six native Arkansans elected into the Hall of Fame. He is so synonymous with the St. Louis Cardinals for such good reason. And it's not just what he did on the field. He's one of those guys that just seemed to come back, uh, was revered by every Cardinal player, every coach, every fan. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I didn't ask you this, but I'm assuming you must have had some some uh, some experiences around Lou Brock just being a longtime St. Louis Cardinal. A, a lot of time with, with Lou. You know, that, that's one thing that the St. Louis Cardinals were so good at. Their Hall of Fame guys, um, they were around a lot. You know, Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, Red Shandings, um, guys that were in, in, in the big hall, uh, they had carte blanche. I mean, he could walk in the clubhouse at any time. He would come to spring training every year, and, and he would take you around the bases and teach you how to be a better base runner. You know, now for some guys, like Ozzy said it great one day, he goes, hey, this isn't for everybody because he's so technical 
that for a guy like me, if I if I try to do what Lou did, I'm, I'm breaking about two seconds after Lou is already sliding because I'm looking <laughs> for so many things. But that's what Lou was so good at. You know, he taught you how to take the lead, what to look for in different pitchers, and he showed videos of watch this guy. You know, his his pants will tighten up at, right before he gets ready to go. Um, he picked up things that were just so incredible. But the one thing I could say about Lou Brock, you know, as great as a ball player he was, he was even a better human being. Meaning, you know, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He, he walked where 1% of the players walked. But when Lou Brock came to that clubhouse, he went to everybody in that locker room that was sitting there and gave them their five minutes. He'd come over, hey, Pags, how you doing? What's going on? What are you feeling? You know, hey, this is what I see. Um, not everybody did that. You know, a lot of guys stuck to themselves. Lou Brock was a teacher. He was an ambassador. Um, you know, if, if I ever heard anybody say a bad word about Lou Brock, I'd walk the other way because that's the bad guy. You you mentioned the word ambassador with, with, with Brock here, and I feel like uh, – there are only so many franchises in Major League Baseball where you can point to real franchise traditions. And look, I'll be up front. I'm a Pittsburgh native. I'm a Pirates fan. I make fun of the Cardinals, but it's probably out of envy more than anything else. So Absolutely. the Cardinals, the Dodgers, the Yankees, these are franchises that, are, that, that, are, that fit into what I'm talking about. When you look at like the history of these great players, you can just draw a line. Musil to Gibson to Brock, to all those great players of the 80s, which you know well, like Ozzy and and uh, and McGee and and Whitey managing. And then it goes to you and, and uh, you know, and, and Langford and Pujols and Molina. It's just, what does it mean to be a St. Louis Cardinal? Well, it's, it's a special place. And, and uh, until you've been there and understood, it's hard to explain. But it's an organization that does things the right way all the time. It doesn't mean that they're always right, but they try to do things the right way. I mean, I'm talking about from taking care of the wives to the children all the way up to the front top office. They try to do things the right way. You know, you hear people talk about the cardinal way. Um, a lot of it goes back to a guy named George Kissel that did every job except for managing the big leagues and general manager, but he worked everywhere in the organization. Um, he's a guy that had a, a huge input in what goes on. You know, he, he, he passed away about, I'd say 15 years ago, but people still talk about George today. And it's just the way they go about their business and the way they treat their players. You're a former player. You're a former player. There's guys, you know, perfect example. Bergman, who played for the Houston Astros, Hall of Famer, okay, Hall of Famer, played 18 years for the for the Astros and one and a half years for the St. Louis Cardinals. We were in fantasy camp last year, and we're talking about kind of the same thing you are. He goes, you know, I feel like I played here longer than I played in Houston, the way they treat me. Hmm. I mean, you're talking about an all-star, Hall of Famer, with the Houston Astros and his year and a half in St. Louis or two years, whatever it was, he feels more part of the Cardinals because of the way we do things. Hmm. Uh, Edmund said it's the hard same to thing. explain. McGuire said the same thing and they had, they played long careers with other teams too. It's just, yeah, this is something you hear repeated from a lot of players. You know, and, and being in the Midwest, you know, um, you know, that was the first team West of the, uh, of the Mississippi, you know, at one point, um, the whole Midwest, you know, going to St. Louis. I grew up a Dodger fan. I'm from Arizona. I grew up from a Dodger fan. I didn't know a whole lot about the St. Louis Cardinals when I got there. I Man, I heard, I heard Vince Scully of the Midwest, you know, Jack Buck. Uh, the following was throughout the whole Midwest. I mean, it wasn't just Missouri. It's Missouri, Arkansas, the Dakotas, all the way to New Mexico, even into Colorado, which had the Rockies. Um, you know, Atlanta, your fan mails from all over the place. It was, it was, it was incredible. Uh, the following that they have, you know, they had one of the largest radio networks in, in all of baseball. 
Um, I think that had to do a lot with it. Jack Buck was tremendous on the radio. Um, Hall of Famer, you know, did a lot of things. Um, you know, Mike Shannon, that they, they've had the same people there for a long, long time. And, you know, going back to Lou Brock, Lou Brock was, man, you know, it's funny because you hear people talk about when that trade was, you know, that trade was made. Bob Gibson tells a great story. You know, Lou who? Lou who? <laughs> right. they, they, they didn't know who Lou Brock was. They were upset. You know, they I mean, all Lou loved Brock Ernie Brock 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 Brock. Yeah, exactly. They were pissed off that they traded Ernie. They're like, I mean, are we trying here? And, I mean, you you, you got one of the, the next great outdoors for the next 15 years. We I mean, hit 300 at age 40. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. 118 steals at age 35. I mean, really? Ricky couldn't even do that. No, no. And, and it was a disservice when Ricky broke that record and, you know, said he was the greatest and looked over mm-hmm. at Lou Brock. No, no. Lou Brock was a much better base stealer. You had a lot well, more like, opportunities. The way that Ricky handled that was the antithesis of the way yeah. Brock would have handled. Like, flip the roles there. Brock wouldn't have said a single thing. In fact, he wouldn't have wanted the microphone in his face. Right. So that that was that was the neat thing about Lou. You know, uh, he talked about team. One of his biggest speeches. It's it's not I. It's not I. You know, you know, it's a team. It takes it takes. You know, he, he would say it takes a village to win. It takes many of you, every part, from the 25th guy to the first guy. And um, he always emphasized that. Um, you know, and, and Lou was one of the guys when he was there. When they were winning, Lou, would, you know, Lou was a guy. But he never, he never made it sound like it was about Lou Brock or Bob Gibson. It, it, was, it was about Dell Maxville. It was about, you know, here's a, a nine-hole hitting shortstop, hitting 210, you know. And he talked about how important he was. Um, but that's just the character that Lou was. Tom, we got to run up against the break. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on today. And uh, I could talk baseball with you for hours, so hopefully another time. You bet. You got my number anytime. All right. We'll, we'll, uh, Thank we'll you keep guys. you to that. Appreciate it. Tom Pagnazzi, former Razorback, longtime Cardinal, uh, three-time Gold Glove winner. You know what else he should be doing here, SmackDown? What's that? He needs to enter to win the Hardy's Lunch Bunch at HitThatLine.com. He really should. You head to HitThatLine.com, and if you got you an office bunch or a job site you're wanting to take care of lunch for, Hardy's in Northwest Arkansas has got you covered. And like Phil said, head to HitThatLine.com, click on the Hardy's Lunch Bunch button on the menu bar, and leave your info. Tomorrow, we will announce our fourth winner for the Hardy's Lunch Bunch for lunch to be brought to you, courtesy of our friends at Hardy's in Northwest Arkansas in the River Valley and hit that line.com. Head there today and register. We're picking a winner tomorrow. The Pirates can't lose right now, SmackDown. They are totally ruining my whole idea of how bad are the Pirates today, and apparently they don't want John, uh, Kumar Rockers.